Tom. You gotta remember about him. And uh, thanks to Tommy for putting this on. And uh, as a person who's been through hell shit, use that shit to make you stronger, don't you? Let your art come out. I'm sure you will. I love you so much. Anyways, uh, so uh, Brad. next. Brad, we're, well, not, we're not all deaf old rockers. <laughs> well, I can't help it. That's how I do. Well, somebody can turn it down. I can't. That's how I talk on a mic. I can't stand it back here. I guess I could. Uh, anyways, uh, in December, uh, I guess this is the official announcement. Uh, my book is finally getting put, put out. Uh, uh, small Dungeon Press. Yeah. Yeah, in December. I thought I'd read a little bit from that to get some energy going. And uh, this is like chapter 20. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. Uh, a lone street light sat way up on top of a wooden pole and cast a smeary half yellow light down in the dirt of the street, giving me its permission to start recognizing people. See Angelina, see Wayne, see Michael McDermott from my high school algebra class. People was yelling stuff out like, get him, kick his ass, and people were screaming the way they do when something scares the hell out of them, even though they, 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 even though they just can't take their eyes off it. <clears throat> Uh, them two fighter people, them two dudes parking each other, uh, dudes pacing each other in a roundabout, fist balled up boxer, their feet mid side stepping back and forth, doing the dance. There was some blood hanging out on the end of the bigger fella's nose. Some of the deep animal come rising up out of me, made me feel for a second like I wanted to be part of the violence, made me feel like punching somebody for no reason, just not to be out there in the fray. I looked up into the sky and seen some stars breathing up there. Tried to find the particular star me and Evelyn had reserved special for the human race. The one we had wished upon that was going to give all the world an everlasting peace and free it from hunger and ignorance and disease and from all the other things about Disney. I still ain't sure if it really was me and Evelyn's star. I looked up into the night when I looked up in the night that day, but I felt proof positive that it wasn't that star either. I was high and drunk, and that star had looked back at me all blurry, and I said all the way up to it so that it could hear, hello, Evelyn. Then wheels started turning in me. Then the wheels that the Jesus in me, or the Buddha, or the Hindu, or maybe just the way one tree grows into an open field next to another tree. I shouldered my way into the ring. <clears throat> Two-fisted with a beer in each of my hands, the street lamps yellow light holding everything down, the uneven dirt and gravel rocks under my feet, then two fighters only six strides away from me. The bigger guy, he was all blonde, tall and broad, another one of those Viking people that had come before. He was wearing some cut-off shorts and, all, and of all things, some cowboy boots. Cut-off shorts and cowboy boots. Motherfucker looked ridiculous. No wonder he was in a fight. The smaller guy was the Mexican. I had seen him around before. He was short and a thick brick of a building. What word was that he was a golden glover. Golden glover, that means he could fight like one hell of a son of a bitch. He had on some long blue jeans and some tennis shoes, one of them white beater undershirts that my grandpa used to just pull his gravy on. Some of them crowd was yelling at those fighters, all those things that made the matters worse. Things like, kick him in the nuts and tear his ass out. I didn't know you could tear somebody's ass out. At least I never heard of anybody tearing anybody else's ass out before. All the people standing around in the circle looking at me, looking at the bumpy spills. Some of them had seen, seen me run my act before. The bigger fight fellow, his eyes were some kind of crazy cow around mad, and I could tell he was drunk the same as me. I took a sharp, a slur from one of my cups, peace of love and understanding in my mouth. I swallowed and let it enter into me. I raised my voice up so that everybody could hear, started right up in the middle of one of my conversations with the world. You don't need no, you don't need no fight, I said, no war. Use the words, talk, show them monkeys we've got the evolution that we have involved. 
Bucky, Bucky, don't, came a clue, but I didn't listen. I moved in closer to them, two fighters' ears, my mouth moving in a hammer, a flood of words spilling out, a deluge, the beers in me doing the talking. What would John Lennon do, I said. He sure as hell wouldn't be out here in the middle of some street fighting like you two idiots. And my Gandhi, he wouldn't be caught dead out there neither. And Joni Mitchell, well, you just never can say nothing, nothing, nothing never bad about Joni Mitchell, can you? The small fighter was looking at me funny, like I was from some cartoon planet he'd never known about until then. Squinted his eyes and took a step to the side so he could get a better look. I kept on. Haven't you guys learned yet that might is not always bright? Look at the Vietnam. Just look at the Vietnam, for Christ's sake. The smaller fellow, he had some blue veins extruding out of the side of his forehead. There was in a pump. His eyes burrowed into me like he was wanting me to fight, to fight me next. My dad was in Vietnam, he said. But I didn't really want to talk about that. Running in danger of getting too much into the political. It wasn't the time or the place. And besides that, the motherfucker was listening to me. The whole world was listening to me right then. All the people of all the people of the circle quiet, staring at me. I took another drink off my beer, my feet planted in a pulpit. Monkeys, they fight, I said, fight for being the alpha, alpha male and their territories and all that. But we ain't apes no more. We got houses and roads and swimming pools and shoots and ladders and twister, goddammit. The big fella must have been in that. It seemed that smaller one was distracted and tried to take advantage and he bull rushed that Mexican surprise attack all elbows and assholes. But the Mexican dude was ready and he waited for the recklessness until he threw a jab that caught that big fella's impatience up there on the side of his head. The Mexican stepped back out of the way with a smile on his feet, on his face, because he had just heard a man. Them spectators. Get that motherfucker, they said. And you're going to take that? Hit him back. Hit him back. The dance would return between the two fighters, and dust kicking up around their feet. I couldn't believe it. It was as if I was never there, as if, I, as if nobody had heard a single word I said. A beer is still in my hand. I got closer to them two guys, and they're going at it. Get a bunk, someone said someone in the crowd. It sounded like Wayne. Tear his asshole out. It was, it was Wayne. I found him in the crowd, and shooting his fists off all into the air, air all in a shadow box, as if he was in the Boys Club of America boxing coach I never had. had he was bobbing and weaving, throwing this punch and that into the ethers of the airs. I moved in closer. You guys just need a little love, I said. Nobody was listening to me anymore for sure. So I got my body into a spot so I could intercept the bigger fellow when he came around in the circling again. When he got to where I was, I reached out and put my hand on his shoulder and then pulled on it to turn so he could face me. Listen to me, I said. Bucky, listen to me. 